Standard two laps, faster of the two is the lap that goes into the record book. Later tonight, qualifying for the All-Star Challenge, multiple laps, including a pit stop. So don't go away. And that, trust me, that pit stop will be the difference of who sits on the pole and probably who qualifies about 15th. Jeff Green in a Bugles Cheerios paint scheme on the Petty number 43 Dodge, the first of many special paint schemes for the all-star event that we'll see. And you don't see many 43 Petty cars without some kind of blue on it. That might be one of the first in my memory. Jeff was 13th quickest in practice earlier today. And one thing we need to talk about, if you notice, the racetrack almost looks like it has wet spots on it. Well, they did a process here that's called levigating. Basically, they smoothed this racetrack out. They did away with the humps and the bumps. And the one thing that's done, the speeds. It has picked, picked the speeds up here dramatically from what they were in the past. Yeah, basically what they did, you can still see how, you can see those dark spots in the racetrack. That's where the bumps were. They've taken the spikes out of the bumps. Hmm. Instead of spiking up on a graph, now they're there. They're just more gradual. They're uh, more like a wave. But now they're it, still there. You can see the cars move around a lot. Jeff Green, 29.018, the first lap is quicker. Is levigating another one of those words for Daryl's dictionary, or did that come out of the home office of Lowe's Motor Speedway here? I don't know who made it up, but I know somebody's really selling it hard all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> if you even act like you want to say grind, somebody will grab you. <laughs> They'll grind you. That's right. Dick Bergren. Sterling Marlin about him, Mike Garvey in the 75 car. Three attempts, including this race at Richmond, and he's made both races. I think he'll make this one pretty easily. He's as fast in practice. First lap, 21-26. Oh, I don't know about that little wobble. Oh, right look there. at that tracker. First, keeps flirting first to second, but uh, right there, that hurt him. Yeah, that little wobble right there will hurt his lap speed for sure. He was on a pretty good lap, though, obviously. He will be a go or go home car. And he slows down a little bit, I think, all of that bobble over there off turn two. And the difference between first and fifth is only 16 one hundredths of a second. So it doesn't take much to get that tracker to move southward. And at speedtvbooks.com. Another new paint scheme. This is Aerometrics on Scott Riggs. That's Never stuff mind. right here. I was reading about this, and this is the little arrow, the air things you hang in your car, air freshener deals. They've been doing a study about different fragrances, fragrances that you'd pump into a car. They found that the pine scent is a, a calming effect on the driver. And now they're trying to figure out how to pump pine scent into some of these driver's cars. Like we could think of three from last week in particular, <laughs> couldn't we? Exactly. Well, I, I wonder what get up on the wheel scent smells like. Uh, Let pole qualifying continues for the NASCAR Bush Series in Fontana, California. Kevin Grubb completing his qualifying laps. It's a good lap. Ninth quickest for Kevin. 179.605 miles per hour. Back to Dick Bergeron. And Ron Hornaday right now talking to his crew explaining. It's because there is no bank and no uphill or no downhill to get you back in. And you always seem to run out just as you go past pit entrance. Yeah, so just you got a long way to come around. Chad McCombie driving the 45 car for Petty Enterprises. His Nextel Cup debut. Won the ARCA race here yesterday. And he's got some company down there on pit road. Tony Stewart pulls off the track. 0.279 miles an hour. Guess I have to call him Texas Terry Labonte at least once this weekend. That's right. The Iceman or Texas Terry, whichever right. one. And he was the track record before today. And uh, Rusty Wallace won nine poles in the year of 2000, two years ago, and had won one since. And uh, I just, I, I, I keep thinking back, Larry, and you remember this. They took his qualifying engine, toured all the pieces, and put it on display out at uh, Sears Point. Yes. And uh, from there on, I don't, I don't know that he ever had the success that he had after that. That group was definitely probably one of the more aggressive groups with the lighter parts of the qualifying engine. They had a lot of good, unique stuff in that engine. Rick Mast out of Virginia, or Jenny Donlevy. This hour is number 94, 17, 28.4. That, that should put him in the yeah. field, and uh, he did not qualify Decent for lap. this race a year ago. It's not a bad lap. Missed the show. Not a bad lap at all. See if he picks up on the second lap. 
he does not. 13 one hundred slower. Mark, Mark Tudor is the crew chief on the car now, and he and Rick worked really well together a couple of years ago. So they got that program turned around a little bit, Steve. Well, guys, Jeff Green. There are 44 cars here for 43 spots, and this is the Dave Marcus number 71. Jay Sauter is the driver. And it's a it's a Dave Marcus car, but actually with Richard Childress Racing engines, and realistically a Richard Childress Racing driver in here because Jay Sauter at next week at Nashville on Saturday on FX will be in the Bush car that Jeff Green actually is on the pole here for tomorrow in one Bristol race on the events that's not with the Winston Cup event. Jay Sauter will drive that 21 Bush car. Doing a pretty nice job here. I mean that's 28 quick. Got to put him in the show. Second lap is uh, quicker by three one hundreds. Well, you can tell us those cars have got high gears it's in them. Their old motor goes by here, just sound like it's lugging along. Well, we heard Michael talk about pulling almost like a Daytona gear. At Daytona, they are pulling like 307s, 315s. I heard of cars here pulling 325s, 333s. Two years ago, with Mike Skinner, car I was working on qualified 11th with a 360 gear. Yeah, we raced a 370 gear here. Uh, you really, can you feel the speed? <laughs> Well, we, you know, I haven't been turned around yet backwards, so uh, that's when you really know you're going fast. But uh, I tell you, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. You hit something 195 or 185. It leaves a mark either way. All right, good luck Sunday. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, 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 Kimmel. Kimmel. Trouble. Whoa, hard. Oh, man. Hit. Oh, man. That's a fuel fire there. That's back there where the fuel cell is. Man, look at the back of that car, Larry. It What's is back? Gone. There is no back. Frank Kimmel, three-time ARCA champion, came here, brought his sponsor, Advance Auto Parts, to Travis Carter to bring the 26 car here. He's okay. He's not happy. We need to mention, but he was 30th quickest as he crossed the start finish line. Okay. So he is in the show for Sunday, but not with that car. That is, a, that just shows you how fast, 190 plus miles an hour, and how it. Piece just, of the car stuck up there in the fence. It needed to go grab Schrader and show him. It, it does make a difference how fast you're going. And Kenny's right. When those cars get turned around, you really see. Oh boy, the speed here. Now, Travis Carter had shut this race team down and released drivers Joe Nemechek and Todd Bodine after the Kmart bankruptcy filing. Wouldn't uh, the bankruptcy court would not allow them to continue sponsorship payments? But Frank Kimmel called Travis and said, I want to run the car. I can bring a sponsor, and, and, and we can fund this operation. And so here they were with Texas with high hopes until this happened. Goes down into turn one. He's just out a little bit too wide. See the rear, right rear tires right up in that gray. He just got it in there a little too high. It was almost exactly what happened to Robbie Gordon, exactly. just at the opposite end of the racetrack. Exactly. Boy, that was a hard lick. See, it's out. Of, he's he's gone. It's, it's out from under him before he ever even. He's just starting to think about making the turn. The car is already turning around with him before he even gets there. And you can see the fuel cell was shoved all the way into the rear end housing, and no combination of a steel box and a, a bladder is going to withstand that kind of hit. Now these cars normally will qualify with what we call low fuel. That car probably only has five to seven gallons of fuel in the fuel cell. They do that in order to increase nose weight as well as get the ballast of the car as low as they possibly can. That's why we don't see any bigger fire than we see. There's not that much fuel in the car. Because normally when they're full, they hold 22 gallons of fuel. So it's only about a fourth of the fuel yeah. capacity. And that's a, that's a balancing act. It's another thing that you do, take it off the rear and put it on the front. All right, so Kimmel is 30th. He will be in the race Sunday with a backup car. Let's go back to Steve Burns. A car, the 92 car, that's a car that led the points a lot this season and won a race back in Darlington. And when looking at Regan Smith, there was no question watching that kid, he was really going to do much better the second half because the first half, every time he rolled in a racetrack, he was seeing that racetrack for the very first time. And uh, Jeff, both of those teams are hopeful of returning to the circuit, but 
you need the sponsor dollars to be able to come here and run at that at this level. Yeah, definitely you do right now as we see our first car to roll off and that's K Casey Atwood right there. Yeah, in first practice session, he was not being like 23rd fastest on the field, but uh, he's now driving for uh, Fitz Bradshaw right now in the Janet King Special as he gets ready to come down to turn three. But going back, talking about those teams, I saw Tony Liberati, Todd Bodine, as well as Regan Smith. They're all up here in the garage area. They're letting everybody know that, hey, I want to drive a race car. If something's available, I'll get in it. Casey Atwood, uh, we talk about drivers returning here to Chicago. He's not one of them. This is his first start here in the Bush Series, and it'll be his fourth race of the series in 2003. See a little bobble right there. He's about to get ready to exit up off of turn two. Uh, car didn't like it was quite up under it, did it, Larry? No, it didn't. And again, you're running down in the corner so hard. You heard Mike McLaughlin talk about it. I mean, I, I listened to the same thing in practice. If these guys were coming out of the throttle in the middle of the corner, it was just a little bit. Most of the fast cars were not coming completely out of the throttle, just enough to set the race car down in the middle of the corner. Jeff, you've been in this sport a long, long time. Do you ever think we'd come to a track this size and see the drivers flat-footed all the way around? No, never, Mike. But I think, right, again, we talk about technology, what guys have learned about chassis setups as well as shocks and aerodynamics and how they kind of work together. That's what allow these drivers to carry all the corner speed that they're doing right now. Is they're finding out that we can plant these race cars and really make them run fast by these adjustments. And Casey's first lap was 31 flat. He's going to complete the second lap. He's going to pick up about two and a half tenths, but he still is about two tenths shy of what he ran in practice. And I think there's so much to the heat and the tires here. Normally, the Bush Series makes their guys qualify on sticker new tires. They will not let them put them on race car. But because of the grip this racetrack has, the new tires were a little bit loose or actually wormy. So now he don't like his race no, car. No, I don't think he does. <laughs> no, they're, they're going to get some polish no, for that. No, no. He said, he said the engine. Let's make sure we clarify yeah, the crew chief. He oh, said, remember now, that the car is handling good, but it's not running. That's a totally different deal here. Well, what I was fixing to say, we wanted to eavesdrop on a little bit. That's a team that's a lot like the 21 team of Richard Childress. They're trying to win the owner's championship, and they are fourth in owner points, as now we see Jason Keller in the 57 car start his run. He's uh, got milk splashed all over the front of that Albertsons Ford. Jewel Osco, Midwest grocery chain, uh, all on the flanks of that car this week. Slap for Jason is fourth quickest, 30.47. He tested up here, but again, that was in that Winston Cup effort of DEI that he's going to be attempting to qualify later on this afternoon. Did you get to see the concert last night on Fox? No, I did not. Oh. Jeff and I, we were over doing a little appearance for Harris here and uh, didn't get to Taking see that. Taking care of business. Work. We were over with the legendary A.J. Foyt and oh, Robbie Gordon, so uh, yeah. had a really good time. The Dale Earnhardt uh, tribute concert aired on Fox last evening, and boy, what a great show. A lot of highlight clips. A lot of folks you'd recognize in the videos, and uh, hard to watch, but enjoyable. Jason Keller, second lap. He is hurry to move up the Winston Cup. Nope. He's been testing a couple of cars, and a couple of had an opportunity at uh, Indianapolis to drive Jeff Gordon's car recently in Kentucky. So. This really comfortable with his environment right now. He's just showing a lot of maturity for his age. You don't often hear maturity and Michael Waltrip in the same sentence. But, I, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't mean it that way, Mike. I mean, you got to understand, I wasn't talking about Michael. We know Michael is anything but mature when it comes to having a good time. And if you don't believe us, tune in trackside tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern and see why. Hey, he'll smoke he, there. He'll be back. <laughs> I thought I saw a little, little smoke as he looks like tire smoke right settled there. down in turn three. Yep. Eighth quickest on his first lap. Yeah, that's he was the usual quickest in practice. You know, see right there. I think what it is is probably a tire rubbing, right, right front rubbing, just a little bit. When you go off in the corner, after you see the tire smoke off the right front, the cars get down. Larry you talked about earlier. You get them so soft that they rub at the top of the finish. But that definitely running around here at over 180 miles per hour. Uh, I don't think a driver's real happy about seeing smoke coming off that right front tire. I talked to his crew chief yesterday, Bobby Kennedy. Mike was going to move up to third quickest on that second lap. Not bothering him too bad, is Not it? Not really, no. but I asked Bobby, I said, you guys finished second at Daytona. He said, all night long. I love the box cars on Saturday when it said zero. See on the side of the car, driving for Corey Stott, who was a long time Sprint Cup Series mechanic. These guys actually qualified for the race last week at Dover. They barely got in at 43rd. They had electrical issues, finished 37th. I think he's got some work to do. Hang on. That's oh. going to be good. Turn two again. Hard hit for Andy Ponstein. 
Greg Biffle wrecked earlier, has to go to a backup car for this afternoon's race. And in this case, there will not be a backup car. I mean, he was way up the racetrack yeah, to begin with. Groove. Way out of the groove. Which tells me that car was probably loose when he turned it out into turn one, and he couldn't think about turning the wheel. And I mean, he hits that wall hard at a very, very high rate of speed. One more look. You just, you carry so much speed down into turn one. Uh, and, and as Jeff pointed out a couple of times, we've talked about not a lot of banking down there, only 15 no. degrees. And if your car is a little bit on the free side, you're trying to pick that. Just seconds ago, Andy Ponstein qualifying in his 0-2 car, gets loose and backs it into the wall. Dreaded turn two. Man. The hot spot. Got that right. all day. She got a little bit wiggly right there, I and away she went. Uh, the Lakers, Ooh. well, you know, Phil Jackson's record when he wins that first game. That never impeccable. lost. Yeah, so <laughs> that makes this game pretty important. Coming up. <laughs> yeah, they need to win before they go back to Boston for sure. They don't want to have to win all three games back there. Here's Jeremy Clements on the track in the 04, and we're comparing yep. him now to Morgan Shepard, so yep. uh, it's not to the pole sitter. Pretty solid practice for Jeremy oh, man, yesterday as well. It right there, though. Wow, he's going to have to regroup here. Yeah, he does. He has to regroup the worst possible uh, place. And really, that's the worst. Like you said, that, that's going to kill this lap, too, because his speed at that point, you can see now it's in the red. That's because he carried so little momentum from turn four. It's going to be hard for him to get in this field now. Still has a chance. Yep. Making a good effort here now. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Well, he is up on that wheel. Grazed the wall there with that right rear. And again, that's the tracker is in comparison to Morgan Shepard, the fastest of the go or go homers at this point. And had coming off a great run last week at Charlotte where he finished 16th, best finish of the season. I'll tell you, that's a good recovery. Now, he didn't lock himself in, but I do believe this will be quick enough to get in the field. It's 25th quick, that second lap, 31.233. And that's a pretty good recovery from uh, grazing the, I'm sure he grazed the wall there with that right rear. If not, it was very close. Wow. Look see, at this. That was right down the center of the corner where we've seen it. They're trying to get back to the throttle hard and back in just can't keep up. That was, uh, yeah, that was turn four. And this is turn two. Wow. Good job, Jeremy. I'll tell you, this guy is a very talented race car driver trying to do a lot with, uh, you know, a family-owned team here. Hmm. Again, 25th currently for... Jeremy Clements, and uh, let's go down to Jamie Little with one of the good local stories here at Nashville this weekend. Yes, Willie Allen, local boy, and he's helped. This, you got to watch this 05, make this run here and see who gets in and who's who's out. Uh-oh. And Willie Allen having trouble getting it started, and where's Willie Allen? Now check it. Just look in there. Pull it, push it back up. Listen to the radio communication, but from here in the Nashville area, this is such a big event. He'll have five minutes on for the clock to be able to get this thing started, and likely it's a, it's a kill button on the steering wheel, and likely somebody's hit that. And uh, once you've got it in the wrong position, it's hard to figure out which What's position it needs to be in. There we go. We just saw a collective stopping. sigh of relief from the crew guys there, didn't you? Couldn't you yeah. see them all at the same oh, time? Man. Just took a big sigh. Okay, he'll uh, go out here, warm his tires up, catch his breath, and go out here and make a lap. It's a home home race for Willie Allen. Started 14th last week at Charlotte. That was his best start in seven races this season. 29 years old from, as Andy said, right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Follow the tracker as it relates to the 56 of Kevin LePage, currently slowest on that, uh, who's on the bubble of the go or go homers. Now, 31 4 2 3 is the lap that Willie's going to have to beat here. It's uh, Kevin LePage's lap. Looks like he's pretty clean down the back stretch, but uh, he's going to have to pick it up just a little bit. He's, he's behind Kevin LePage. Okay, he's going the right direction now. Looks good for Willie Allen. Not so good for Kevin LePage. So Willie Allen's going to make the show. 
A lot of fans here in Nashville happy to see that. The hometown racer getting in with a 31.23. Good for 31st on the chart. Six of his 16 nationwide series starts have come right here in the state of Tennessee, so we can add to that. This will be number seven. His career best finish, 15th on the concrete at Bristol in March. He'd love to get a good finish here because of all the things that have happened in, in Nashville and this being his hometown. Willie lost his father recently as well. 29, but 31, 14. A lot of emotions for Willie Allen here at Nashville this weekend. So it looks like Stenhouse and LePage will be the two cars that don't make the field. Well, the fastest is Justin Allgaier. Allgaier's teammate Brad Keselowski is the Nationwide Series point. And it felt real good, so we'll just have to see what it'll do tomorrow. Saw you debriefing a rather lengthy debrief with uh, not only your crew chief, Kevin Manning, but also Ryan Pemberton. What were you guys talking about? Uh, why it didn't go fast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what did you figure out? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it really it drove really good. The balance felt good. The only thing I can think is uh, our air pressure was off a little bit uh, to get max grip out of the tires. So we'll just, uh, we never, like I said, we, we don't qualify good here, but we race really well. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. It's one of my favorite tracks. It's Martin Truex Jr., Doc. Thank you, Mike. Uh, on the track, Bernie Lamar, 27-year-old of West Sacramento, California, trying to qualify in the 0-8 car. One of the uh, go-or-go-homers has to qualify on time and speed. Looks like he had a great lap going to the car, just really Whoa. jumps. You see it? Oh, he's just about to lose the car right here. I'll turn two. Man, that, that is a driving scary. son of a gun right there. <laughs> and guys, you know he's a go or a go homer, so he's on the throttle. He's giving it all he's got, and he almost busted it right there. That baby was big time loose and still runs a 29.37, and he's 10th right now. That's a good run. That's amazing. That is unbelievable. I don't... Uh, I don't know what Rhinos is, but they got to be proud of him for that. I think it's going to be a tour up racing car. Carl, we heard Martin Truex just say, you know, I don't know. The car felt good, but it really didn't go anywhere. That's how mine felt. Um, I, mean, I thought they were going to say 28.90 or something like that, and they told me I ran a, a 28 or a 29.20, and a, it, that's tough. Here's Lamar loose, and oh, Carl, he does have a handful. Man, yeah, you got to decide if you're going to stay in it or abandoned ship there. He stayed in. <laughs> Got to make a decision if he abandons, he's going home, right? Yeah, no joke. <laughs> he man. probably wants to hang out here a little longer. That's pressure right there. He said, I've been waiting too long to get this. Up. Tennessee, because you're in race reporter. All right, we that'll be fun, doing that. I'll talk to you then. Okay, buddy. Carl Edwards coming by to join us here. It'll be in Memphis, Tennessee tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Marty Reed, Brandy LaJoy, Rusty Wallace will be up there. Alan Bestwick and company as we'll be covering the NASCAR Bush Series event to see if Carl can win that Bush title. He'll come back here where right now he is currently sits 15th in the qualifying grid of the 41 cars that have gone out. Johnny Sauter, by the way, clocking in 33rd quickest. That time by 29.484 seconds for Johnny. It's like he struggled a little bit with his lap there, too. The back end of that car looked real tail happy. Got a locked-in spot, though. Won't have to worry about that, but uh, he's going to be starting back a ways. A lot of cars with tail happy today, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Jumping around. Mostly on the entry of turn one. These guys have been cutting in real early. 09, just two one thousand slower than Kyle Busch. Whoa! Oh. Save it, hang on. Oh. oh. He was going for it. And now the team's going to have to go to the transporter and get a backup car for Greg. So his second place qualifying will that he has now will stand, but he's going to have to go to the rear of the field. Saw the back end come around. He was he he tried and tried and tried to keep that car underneath him, and he couldn't do it. A lot like what happened to the 29 car. Same location. Same location. Another look. And let's point out something, Steve. This racetrack has got less banking by about three degrees compared to other places like Chicago and everything else. So you see the car get down in the corner right there at the bottom of the white line, and the back end just kept on coming around. And you know when Greg Biffle loses a car like that, you know she had to be sideways loose. And that bad boy right there, Larry, is killed. I just drove, I just drove really hard, and that's where that thousandth came from. And uh, Tommy and those boys gave me some great brakes. The front of that car is sticking good, and that's what's important here. You get the front tire sticking, then you can use all your brakes, and they did a great job. It's just, uh, I really believe that it's as much car here as it is anywhere in the world because 
corners are so tight, you know, you can't you can't do much or get sideways or mess you up. But I'm, I'm going to go now. So far, Michael Waltrip is the fastest. Dave? And one guy who's had a pretty good car here at Martinsville, Ryan Newman. I believe two of your 37 career polls have come at this place. You were second quick on the board today. How about it? Um, I think we got a, a definite shot. This uh, Alto Dodge is pretty good in practice. And, uh, Gordon, I'm a little worried about him. He, uh, he only did a couple qualifying runs in his P1. So uh, I know he's had a good car, but I know it's also really tough here to get uh, at least one out of the three uh, laps pretty clean and good. So uh, uh, we'll see if we get this, uh, this Alto Dodge hooked up. All right, watch the 24 and the 12, guys. Thank you, Dave. I want to ask you guys, Matt Kenseth was one of the slowest in practice today. Uh, would he possibly have sort of given up qualifying to work on his race setup, or what do you make of that? Well, there's no question. He probably worked on his race package the majority of that practice session but I still wouldn't be surprised to see him go out there and have a pretty decent qualifying run because this is one of those places where the, the, the setup package, it just doesn't change that much from qualifying to race setup. Marty's with Greg Biffle. Well, Greg Biffle, the next driver out is Mike Skinner in the 72. And right now we have two go-or-go-homers left to qualify. Mike Skinner in the 72, one of those cars. Next car to qualify, Chad Chaffin in the 61, and the two cars Watching these two qualifying runs will be Kevin LePage and Mike Bliss in the 49 car. Mike had a good qualifying run last week at Lowe's Motor Speedway, but he was caught up in that first lap crash. It actually took out several race cars. Steve, here we, excuse me, I was going to say, Steve, here we go again. We talk about the race on Sunday, but here's the race within a race between these final two competitors just trying to make their way into this, into this race here on Sunday. So uh, a lot of people sometimes forget the fact how important qualifying day can be. It will not happen on lap one for Mike Skinner, so he's going to have to try to make up some ground on lap two at a 20.06. He needs to run faster than a 19.993, so he needs to pick up a little over a tenth of a second on lap two. Lost a little bit of ground right there at three, Larry, so he does come off the four. I don't think it's going to do it. 19.96, that will not do it, but that puts him on the bubble now, which bumps left Kevin LePage. He's right now one one thousandth of a second behind Kevin LePage. Kurt Busch still the fastest, but the final three drivers are Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Joe Nemechek. Pressure on Chad Chaffin in the 61. Now he was 43rd quickest in practice at a 19979. He needs to beat a 19965, which is Mike Skinner that just qualified in that 72 car. We do know that Mike Bliss in the 49 car will not race on Sunday. This car missed the race at, at Lowe's Motor Speedway last week, where we had about 50 cars there for qualifying. Hey, let's speculate a little bit. We got Kurt Busch sitting on the pole. His time was about a 1940. You got Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Joe Nemechek. Any one of those drivers a threat for the pole position? Remember who sat on the pole here for the spring race? Jeff Gordon's teammate, Jimmy Johnson. In fact, it's been Jimmy's only pole in 2006. So it's not over until it's over, young man. Well, for Chad Chaffin on his first lap, he didn't get the job done. And coming off of turn four, it's not looking too good. No, Chad Chaffin will not race on Sunday, but that will put Mike Skinner in the 72 car into the show. So we know that Mike Skinner is locked in because the final three drivers obviously qualified because they're in the top 35 and points. Second car on track is going to be Derek Cope. This is the number 94 Holler and Green Trucking Dodge. This will be Derek's first voyage for this team. He tries to make his 19th cup race of the season. Derek's best start at Atlanta third here in 1994. Mike, this team here has made some attempts, but they are way down the owner's list, so this pretty much would be about a go or go home car. They're pretty much going to have to be in the fastest 38. But Mike, you were talking about how teams were tense about this qualifying session. Now, another indication I see is we see when we don't have a big field of cars, a lot of even the teams up in the points will work on race setup. I saw almost everybody focusing on two lap qualifying runs earlier in practice. First lap for Cole, 30.33.
And I just believe you're going to have to run at least in the 29 second bracket to make that top 38. So that means Colt needs to find three tenths and then some on this second lap. Well, in practice, we actually had 40 cars that ran in the 29 second bracket. Colt's time falls off by about a tenth. Dave Burns. With Ricky Rudd now. Ricky uh... as well. As is this one, Larry Hollenbach from Kalamazoo, Michigan, powerboat racing veteran with considerable arc of experience and five Bush Series starts, is attempting to make his first cup race in this SWAT Fitness Center Chevrolet. And for practice, he's probably going to need to pick up uh, actually a little over two seconds to even remotely get in this show. Go back to Joe Nemechek's pre-qualifying interview. He, he talked about if you just miss it ever so slightly, because as we talked in the note, and you're entering these corners at well over 195 miles per hour, off the throttle, what little you're off in the middle of the corners, mid-170s, if your car is just a little tight, or especially a little loose, you're gonna have to roll out of the throttle, and it's gonna make a huge difference. Excuse me, as we talked about earlier, 40 cars were within one second of each other. So, I mean, it's a, a very little bit when you fall off that edge, what it can cost you. 32.73 is, is not going to get it for Larry Hollenbach. But coming here, gaining the experience and learning what you need to know to come back next time is valuable. Second lap picks up half a second, but 32.27, it looks like, is going to fall short. Four-year-old Shane Meals had quite a season with one win and nine top tens in the truck series, six bush races, and three cup races. As he times him 22nd, 29.72. Kenny Wallace, sad about his Cardinals being swept by the Red Sox, but he's got he's got prob more problems than the Cardinals right now, though. Yeah, his uh, Aaron's number double O is not coming to speed. Guys, I was watching, he's come up through the gears, and I'm not too sure, but I thought I saw something come out from underneath the car almost. And it makes me wonder what came or not, as we'd say, whether it was engine or something to do with the drivetrain. And, and what's sad about this right here, this is pretty much a go or go home car. Absolutely. In that uh, the double O team has not run enough races to have enough owner points uh, to be high enough up the provisional list to get in the show. So now Wallace has not taken the green flag. So they'll have a look at things here. Let's see if we can see maybe what happened here as he left pit road. Didn't really see anything necessarily unusual there, so I, I don't know. Wait and figure out what happened with Kenny Wallace. Where's Matt? And right now, the man on the bubble is Bill Elliott in that 98 car. And Bill Elliott, remember, is a go or go home because that car number is infrequently run by Ray Evernham's team. As this car right here is, Larry Ford in the 59 car, the second bound racing entry. Larry was only 52nd quickest earlier today in practice, so uh, he's going to have to definitely pick it up if he wants to race on Sunday. As we look at Bill Elliott, he sits there in 38th place. you got to remember that Matt Kessel um, is up in the points, but he's also a previous champion. Terry Labonte is a previous champion. So if Bill was to get bumped out, I mean, the way the, the previous champion would be awarded, uh, he may or may not be eligible for it. Larry would pretty much have to pick up about three quarters of a second from what he practiced earlier to make the fastest 38. That first lap will not do it. That's exactly what he practiced at 30.55. So 
So unless he can pick up quite a bit on this second lap, the big sigh of relief will be coming from Bill Elliott right now in that 98 team. Well, since they would go by this year's owner points first in awarding provisionals, Matt Kenseth would get the first provisional spot. Michael Walt from Sterling Marlin um, would look further on down. See where Terry Levine would fall compared to Elliott, but that may be a moot point. Larry Foyt, 30-55. He's going to need seven-tenths. He didn't get it. He fell off by three-tenths, so Larry Foyt does not make the field. Bill Elliott gets the final time trial spot. We will hear from the Rocket, who is the Bud Pole winner again, and set the field.